Hi everyone, I'm now going to show you how to use the symbolization module for Logic 2010. The symbolization module is actually sort of the most finicky and sort of challenging to use at times, but um, it does teach sort of good skills and the best part is you can really, uh, you know, check your answers, which is always nice. So I will do 1.021. So when you actually queue up a question from symbolization, you get the following uh, picture. It lists the symbolization up here, and then you have another yellow line of the exact same thing. Now, everything in symbolization is done by right-clicking and left-clicking. And so what we will do is we will right-click the sentence, and we'll give the program an instruction. The instruction it's going to ask for is essentially asking, what is the main connective of the sentence, or is it atomic? So in this case, I say it is not the case that if the interview is canceled, Rudolph will not be elected. So it looks like the main connective here is a negation. So I right click and this menu pops up and I will say negation. Now at this point I can just keep going or I can actually use the cut and paste method. So if I actually take the negation what I can do is it will help me paraphrase the sentence. So now I have taken care of it is not the case that and what I have left to symbolize is if the interview is cancelled Rudolph will not be elected. I highlight that right-click to copy, and then over here I will right-click to paste. So it lets me paraphrase as I go like I did on my lecture slides. So now I have negation. If the interview is cancelled, Rudolph will not be elected. What I do now is I realize that this sentence that I have left to symbolize is a conditional, so I right-click, click conditional. I'm not going to bother reparsing everything. I can even type it out on my, uh, on my keyboard if I want to, but I'm just going to keep going. The antecedent, then, is if the interview is cancelled. So I look over here, and I have a little symbol, T, for the interview is cancelled. So immediately, do I, is it a negation, conditional, atomic? Well, it's actually an atomic, and it will ask me which letter. I look on the side, and I realize that it's the letter T, so I type it in, hit OK, and now it's set to T. Rudolph will not be elected. Well, here, Rudolph will not be elected. That's what I have to symbolize in this part. So, what is the main connective of this? If the symbolization se scheme says P is Rudolph will be elected, the, the main connective is actually a negation, so I put that in, and then now this is the atomic of P, and I hit enter. In the end, it's sort of a step-by-step, -step, easy symbolization process, and what it's given me is up top is the actual full symbolization as I discovered it. I will, of course, click check. It says correct. And so I am ready to move on to the next question after I save. You can do questions in section 1 and 2 right off the bat. So in 2, I'll do 2.040. Now over here, this is a really easy one. Both Alfred and Alonzo order champagne. This is a conjunction. And on the one hand, I could say Alfred orders champagne, which is R. And then I could say Alonzo orders champagne, which is Z. What I'm going to show you is what happens if I reverse the order. So I'm at the atomic level now, so instead I'll punch in Z, and over here as the atomic I'll punch in R. And I can click check, and it says correct equivalent. What this actually means is that um, this is perfectly logically equivalent to the answer that Logic 2010 has stored in its memory, which is not Z and R, but R and Z. Correct equivalents are always considered to be 100% correct, I click S and select a new problem. I will move on to 2.056. This is just a sort of an example of a slightly more complicated one. If UCLA wins its first game, then USC and Cal won't both win their first games. What is the main connective of this? Take a second, think about it. Well, it's got to be the if-then with the comma right here. So I will right-click and say it's a conditional. I will say UCL wins its first game is the antecedent, and then the consequent is this part. And this will just help me sort of move forward so I know what's what. Okay, well what is UCLA wins its first game? That's actually just an atomic, the letter U, so I can right click, kick, go to atomic, and click the letter U. And how do I do this one? Won't both win their first games? Well this is a not both statement. Okay, so here I know for not both the way to symbolize this is with negation. Um, but what if I actually sort of mess up and think this is, I don't know, a disjunction? Um, if I actually tried in the end uh, and I was stuck, I could actually just click 
right click and ask for a hint and it would tell me I did something wrong. And I could click the error box and it will give me some tips. The English expression should be a stylistic variant of blah 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 wh whose correct logical form is a negation. So one feature of this is I can just keep on clicking hint over and over again and it will actually tell me exactly how to symbolize. So that's why Logic 2010 is a really nice learning tool for symbolization. When you're stuck, click hint. Again, this just means you're going to get 100% on the quiz and I'm okay with that, but the point is you use this to learn. So I realize this should actually be a negation. And so instead of USC and Cal won't both win their first game, it's actually they both will win their first game. And I'm just typing that in. So that's obviously a conjunction. And now first I have to say USC will win. And then I have to say that Cal will win. So USC winning, that's the atomic letter S. And Cal winning is the atomic letter Y. Check. Correct. Yay. Save. And I'm done. I'll only demonstrate one last one just to show off another feature of Logic 2010. You might realize that actually all this parsing and breaking down is a bit useless for you once you get to a certain skill level, particularly on very easy questions. So for this one, I don't really want to bother going through the entire thing. So what I can do instead is click Direct. And if I click Direct, it will allow me to enter the symbolization directly without actually having to do anything. Now the symbolization for this is obvious. It's T and P. So I just type T on my keyboard. Oh no, how do I get the AND symbol? Right click. If you right click, it will generate a list of all the symbols that you can enter. So I'll click AND. And in fact, from this menu, I might as well just click P as well. How do I get rid of the menu? Just close it. Now I click OK. Logic 2010 will automatically parse the question according to what it thinks I thought it was, and then it will put in my direct entry solution. I can click check, it's correct, and save. Okay, so I've just demonstrated lots of features of Logic 2010 when it comes to symbolization. Remember, hints will help in teaching you how to symbolize, and check everything you do. Once you get good at this, practice with direct entry, because that is the way that will resemble your test solutions the closest. Good luck!